Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Mrs. Green Thumb and thank you very much and I have picked have at it. What would you like it to be called? The first two butterflies were born today and I'm on here to announce that and so we have the first one is going to be Helena. Helena is number one and have at it. What would you like the butterfly to be named? Do you want it to name your channel? You are very welcome. What would you like it to be named and everything's good with me uh, Miss Southern Belle? So, um, what would you like it? Hey, David. You want it Helen? You want Helen. Okay. Let me fix it. We'll put Helen. Give me one second. I'm putting the name of on this. Uh, I have to go in and switch it. But have at it was the second one. What would you like to be called have at it? What do you want the butterfly name to be? If you're there, David, how are you doing, buddy? All right. So, let me, um, let me put Helen. I'll put Helen right now. I'm going to switch the title. I'm just waiting for the second name because it says Monarch Butterfly number 15. Monarch uh, Helen, and I need the second name. Have at it. What would you like it to be called? I am doing fantastic, David. Fantastic. Um, I've been releasing baby butterflies. I've been naming them after the first people that come to the channel the day they're born, and I do a live stream. So Jesse O is got Helen, so that's Helen. All right, Larry, absolutely. So we will release um, Helen and Larry. No problem. Good morning. Oh, don't mind me if I cry while you release. Seems a lot to. Well, that's all right, Jesse O. That's all right, my darling. Um, but no problem. I will be doing this next year, every year. I think it's a good idea to release it under people's names. Whoever you'd like, whoever wins this gets to release. So Larry is going to be the second one. Um, Monarch Butter at 15. Monarch. Monarch. Wait a minute. Let me type this again. Butterfly. I'm just typing my title of this live stream. Monarch Butterfly. Uh, Helen. And Larry. And you know where to look for it because I titled them. Today is August 13th. And I just changed the name to it. Good morning, Miss Susan Lee. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the. You ready to see the babies? These are these are Helen and Larry, and I got a, a video right now for you. Here we go. I gotta change the title right now myself. All right, there we go, and I'm gonna change the name of this. Rename to Helen. And Larry, I moved them over because they were in there. They were born sometime in the morning. I don't know what time. When I woke up, they were born. So then I videotape and then I bring it to you guys. If they're born in the afternoon, then I'll videotape it and bring it in the afternoon. Um, so there you go. You can. Uh, I have still have marigold in the bottom, but I was trying to see if they were a girl or boy. I couldn't really film it for you because the netting is too awkward. But that's what I was trying to show you. Um, I'm going in for, I just want to see you later. Okay, have a good day, Dave. Can't tell. Well, thanks, David. Where have you been? Anyways, how are you doing, David? So this is kind of, this is awkward. I, there you go, that's better. There they are. There's the incredible Helen and Larry butterflies. Look at how pretty they are. I'm just letting them dry out their wings. They're a little feisty, which is good. I, I won't let them go unless I know they can fly good and they fight me and so as soon as they fight me that's a good sign that they're strong and I can let them go so there, there's your babies Helen and God bless to, to who's passed away Helen and Larry um, and thank you guys all for coming to my channel and thank you for you two for being the first two to my channel so thank you very much there's Marigold and I just I'll put this on for a little bit but um, yep, I got them all named, and, and you ever want to see your butterfly, you, the names are on the, each live stream of who I've released them under. My grandmother was rather feisty, too. Well, she, this, they're, they're feisty, the two of them. The, well, the first one, Helen, actually, that I put in there was probably more feisty than the second one. She was, like, feisty trying to get her out. Like, I, I let their wings dry for so many hours. If they look good, then I pull them out of my other one where they're born and bring them over here. And then I let them dry out for so many hours, and I'll probably, I have to go do stuff today, so I won't be releasing them in the morning, but, uh, well, uh, maybe I will. I don't know. I have to see how, what shape they're in before I let them go. I, they got to make sure their wings are dry or they won't fly very well. Morning, Kathleen. So we have two brand new babies, Helen and Larry. 
So let me tell you the list of the butterflies I've released. And one Marigold is going to be with me. So I will always mention Marigold because she's, she's with me. So we have Bruce and Naya, Pete and Josh, Gary, Christine, Larry. There's another Larry. Nikki, Christopher, Dan, Kathleen, Helen, and Larry. So they, they're pretty close. They mostly look alike. There's, there's the only one that looked really huge was Bruce, but they're pretty, they look pretty close. They're about the same size, most of them. And it doesn't matter whether it's a boy or a girl. They kind of come out, that's about the size right there you're seeing is the normal size. But my husband, the very first one that I named was after my husband, and that thing was huge. It was the biggest I've ever seen. That's, uh, total is all the names I release butterflies on, is that's what you're asking me. So, yeah, that's, I, w I was thinking they'd be ready. The, the, the next batch, they're not dark enough yet, so I don't think they'll be ready tomorrow. These ones I took a while, I guess. I thought they look pretty good. They look, they're really dark, the chrysalids. And let me show you. I'm just going to move this around to, to show you. Where is it? Well, this one I did for Kathleen yesterday, Dan and Kathleen. Um, I got that one. See, so you see the chrysalids, how they're green? They have to turn really dark black. So they, then we know they're going to hatch within that day or the next day. These, the, the rest of them are a little bit too green. They have a touch of brown, so I'm not sure uh, when they're going to be born. But, you know, I do have eight left, guys. So eight, and then I have a baby being raised uh, pretty soon. Well, that's not ready. It's still tiny, the little one. And I have three eggs. So I still have some more I'm working on raising if they hatch besides these eight left. So there you go. And that's what I do. See, I bring them over here to let them dry. And uh, so, so who do we have? All right, you guys are all talking to each other. That's fabulous. So there you get to, I'll just do some little more videos here. Uh, that was fun. Whoa. I love, I look forward to coming on here, showing all the babies. I, and I, I got to keep track of them for next year. So let's, a new total for next year, how many I have. But I will do the same thing. I will probably release some under my family names and some under my, the rest of the channel. Whoever comes can repeat the same year. Wait, when they hatch, was it their food source? I'm com I don't know what you mean. And it's not hatched, but anyways, um, because I could, call, it's not. I call it hatched, and it's not hatched. But I was so excited about butterfly, I didn't uh, probably say hello. Oh, that's all right. So, Kathleen, when they hatch, what is their food? Oh, what their food? F flowers, flowers and stuff. Sorry, I had to make sure I read it right. The the, the pollen from flowers and all that. Surely they must be hungry. They do, but you don't have to feed them, um, Kathleen. When they're born, they you have they they they'll know how to go to their food source automatically. So it's flowers and stuff like that. So when you release them, I only release them if it's running late or there's something wrong with them, and it's honey and water. But um, I don't I won't won't feed them. I haven't been feeding any of them. If I see they're strong enough, they'll go and they'll find a food source. They automatically know that. So. You don't have to feed them. And lots of people here that release butterflies, they don't feed them. You just let them go. Let them dry out. Make sure they can fly and you can let them go. And they know. They, they'll they go. If they come, if they fall, like the one you had yesterday, um, it, it was not strong enough. So I went and caught it. I let it fly. It flew into my neighbor and then it flew in a tree. And so I go and catch it. I come back. I feed it with the honey water. I let it sit for a little bit and then I'll release it again. I'm so amazed that some will stick around so fan Yeah, um, they do. And some hang, hang around my butterfly area back here. Like, uh, where did I put the releasing one there? Like that. I think you seen that yesterday. There it is. But they, they know. They hear my voice since they're tiny. That, uh, you know, some of them say, I'm getting the heck out of here and fly and are great. And other ones are a little, 
have a little bit of trouble flying at first and then they're fine. See right now it's looking for, you can see it's a little bit hungry. Uh, well, it's kind of licking its source. Yeah, I, I never make sure, I make sure that a butterfly leaves and it's in good strength when I let, make them leave. If they need food, I'll give them food, but if they don't, I do it naturally, you just let them go. Um, and I wa watch this one. See, look at this one here. I can't That's videotape nails. every one of them. I should have, but it's just kind of, I don't have the time for that. But um, you watch this no, one. It's so it's I, right I kept here. one and I have another one that I could show you too that I have I can upload for releasing. That was Bruce, the very first one I videotaped to show you release. Goodbye, baby. I, I, just to prove Goodbye. I let him go. See, look at, see how high that is? See how high? Oh, Kathleen, see that, that, um, that buggy? Let me watch this again. See the thing right there? I want to show you that when I let your butterfly go, that container, my neighbor's, that uh, transport that truck thing right there on the ground. The You'll see it in one second. Oh, ready to go. That is where your butterfly flew. It almost hit its head, like knocked into it and flew mm -hmm. right in that container the trees, when you? I released it. So I knew it wasn't strong enough and I brought it back and it was fighting. So I let it go again and then went across to my neighbors and I brought it back because it's just too small. It wasn't didn't have the strength. I fed it, uh, kept it a little bit for a while and then it flew really nicely after that. It just the third time it flew away really good. Well, that's the male. Right it's there is where Kathleen, the, the one from yesterday. Let's see it go. No, it's him. It's right, right here. Just want to show that the the, the trailer there, there. watch when it goes Goodbye, the trailer baby. you're gonna see it right Goodbye. there that trailer that black trail that's where it flew into your butterfly went into that trailer and i went this is no good it's not ready brought sure it back is. didn't like it but i brought it back and then i let it fly again it flew across into a tree and my neighbor said nope still not strong I enough that was a male uh, fed not. it the and then released it and then i saw it fly really nice and it flew into a nice high tree so that's what you want you're you looking go. for you, you know, trees. you're looking for it. It's got to left strength to to get out there. And then they, they do. They naturally know, I think, how to, uh, to pollinate from flowers. They know. They know how to feed themselves after. You don't have to feed them, but that's what I'm aware of. They know. They just have to land on a flower that smells good because they're attracted to the smell of a flower and the pollen. Well, that's the male. And He's just a little bit scared. Yeah, it was good. I like. I'm just telling you that what I do. No, it's some it's of them right will fly, here. and I can tell they're very strong. And other ones just need a little bit more help, and then you let them go. So I don't. I, I only go. keep ones that are Goodbye, wounded. They baby. can't fly away. Goodbye. Like Marigold. Marigold. There's no way she has any strength to fly. She can only fly, like she can fly to like a bush, to a small there bush area, and, and that's it. So. Um, that's anyways. I thought that was the male. It's not. It's the female. Oh, I'm thanks, Kathleen. I um, they're like everyone's a special baby to me. They're all babies. Mm -hmm. Even my, even well, Trucker Man now is like getting into this this year and going, okay, our babies are born this morning. So it's kind of funny that he. I've been doing this for four years, and this is kind of we didn't have this many. So this time he's really watching and um, watching and telling me, reporting to me what's going on, and then he he gets the milkweed if I need it. So um, he's helped me a lot this year. Because well, we had so many. Oh, Last scared. the other years, I only had a few, one, two. So he didn't really have to do anything. But he watched. Well, it's him. He thought, right he was pretty, thought it was cool. But this year, really, really, really thinks it's cool. This year. I mean, God, I named the first one after him. Of course, go. he's involved Goodbye, with it. Goodbye, baby. You know. Goodbye. Let me. Uh, let's show you again how this all starts out with. It all starts out with the milkweed, which um, that's what I kind of stress, you guys. Um, if you want. To protect them and protect bees then grow some common milkweed it's a big deal it's a big deal to do the milkweed but I want to show you I had said it yesterday and I'm seriously I gotta just I gotta do stuff today I can't do it yet but I'm gonna try to film my, how bad my milkweed looks like and find out to try to determine what is going on with it because you don't want the milkweed to look like uh, what I have I I'm so I don't like I want to pull it out because I don't want butterflies laying eggs on it um, because I don't think the food source is very good for the babies. So I I'm, I want to protect. I would rather have no butterflies on in my area, like as far as laying eggs. Not to have no butterflies. I want butterflies, but I don't want them lay eggs on bad milkweed because it's not good for them. So I, I want to pull it out. But I did plant four more new... I have five new milk. They're swamp weed plants, and I planted them in its place. I took care of what I was saying yesterday. I pulled... 
this one out, this tropical, because I do not like it. But we had a, a dis I had a discussion with somebody, and they said, as long as it dies off, like the two of us were saying, yeah, I guess if it dies off and recedes itself, that's fine. But if it stays permanently, this is where it's not good. And I kept telling him, that's the guy that I bought the milkweed from. I said, you don't want this plant to, to it, you know, it's, it's dangerous, this plant. From, it has, um, oh, I forgot, a parasite that's on this tropical milkweed if it doesn't die off. It has, all plants have to die off and reseed and come back. If they don't, they have a parasite that's very harmful to, for monarch butterflies, which I've been saying for over and over, and I apologize repeating myself, but I really do want to educate everybody on what I do here. I mean, it's just, it's not for me to enjoy YouTube. It's for me to get it out, get the word out. And I've always wanted to do this, you know, how important they are. Just realize that from the very first year I did it, it's um, four years ago. All right. So, and then th those are the stages that I showed you though. Just believe it or not, all these butterflies I'm releasing started out all this tiny, you know, I just... I don't get sick of showing you guys, and I hope you, you don't get sick of hearing me talk about it, but I just look at the stage they go through, the egg, and I showed all the little babies, and this is all the stage I go through, too. So it is work. It's not something that if you don't do it right, it's not, it's not worth doing if you don't do it right, I guess is what I want to say. So you have to separate them. You have to keep an eye on them. Make sure you have a food source for them, um, and that's it. Don't go get butterflies and you can't feed them. I mean, that's just ridiculous. That's what I heard from somebody that there's a lady that raised 30 butterflies and then she had no food source for them and she's hunting online to find food for them. Well, you need to, to create the food source. Yeah, I'm, I, I've no doubt mosquito repellent are very bad for butterflies. See, I don't have any of that, Kathleen. I actually don't even like spraying my own skin with that stuff, so... I kind of risk getting bit by mosquitoes, which I do when I'm in the garden. But um, I, I, there is a, one thing that I was looking into, and I bought it, but it didn't work very well, was they, they have sonic uh, watches. And the one I got was kind of cheap. It was from China. So um, I didn't, really didn't give it a good fair shit because it kind of popped out. But there's these sonic watches that by, by sound, they have found that it makes the sound of the when the when the female wants to go bite because she's using it for laying eggs the blood um the male makes a certain sound and she wants nothing to do with the males and the males don't bite it's the females biting so this this sound sonic sound is the sound of a male mosquito um that basically the female stays away from you by wearing this this sonic sound that a male mosquito makes i don't know if you ever heard of that but that's kind of the newest thing out they have and I tried buying one, but it just kind of kept popping out. It was too cheap of a one, but I might later on look into a better one. You just wear this watch, and it, it, it puts the sound out. Like they do the, the sonic waves for mice. They don't always work 100%, but so far, actually, the one I bought four of them in my house, and I haven't really seen a mouse since I bought those. So I think to a point they actually do work pretty decent, and then they're not hurting anybody. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sonic, um, are, there's sonic things that are really fantastic that work. They won't hurt anything except they annoy the animal. So the, the animal, the one sonic sound for mice, it's set on a freak wave and, it, and you just plug them in and they get annoyed by it. So they don't want to go in your house or anything. And then there's one for mosquitoes that it's been out for a little while. And if you start researching, you'll find it. You'll see that there's this kind of it's like a band they design it like a watch sort of you put on your wrist but make sure you get a good one because the one i got from china was too cheap the little section pops off and i, I lost it actually yeah i have one for mice yeah sorry not butterfly it's bad for bees that's okay kathleen that's a good point that you're saying anyways uh, all that sprays is good bad for bees and we need the bees for sure sorry i'm repeating this and so that's that's where I started them. So I have, if you think about it, I have released 13 butterflies and one, um, 14 technically, because I have Marigold at home with me. So there you go. And see how the dark, I just want to show this part. I start looking at this stuff and I want to show you, this is the green and this is how 
Um, that's Marigold. See, she was damaged. I tried to save her, but she that her chrysalis all um, deformed and everything, and that tells me there's going to be an issue with a butterfly if that chrysalis deformed. So there's a lot to learn, guys. Lots I learned learned a lot this year, and I'm sure I'll be continuing learning things. Um, I actually used to put these in the house and raise them in the house, and I'm putting them in the garage. And technically, if I had a way, I'd be putting them outside. You need to kind of match their, their, the way they are born in nature, which they're born outside. They have to do the wind conditions, the rain conditions. They're through all those conditions. And the best right now, because of rodents and everything, I'm doing it in my garage. But if I could find a way to do these outside and match their environment, I would be doing that without so to try to save them outside let them do their thing put some milkweed inside the netting and kind of let them more do their thing um that's what i'm working on for next year i think somehow to do it a little different for it but um you know it's fun learning things all the time on this i'm just trying to see so this is oh there's bruce that was the very first butterfly my husband's and it's a really big butterfly i don't know if I wish I had one beside it to show you. This is the biggest butterfly that I had, and the rest are all pretty well similar in sizes. But this was um, a big one. It was the biggest butterfly. I don't know if you can really tell by me showing you this one. How do they hang then? They go and they actually... Um, they kind of put this, I don't know what it's called, it's its like a, a slimy thing that makes it stick really strong. So they do it themselves, so they'll climb to the top, and then they kind of like, it, they go into, well, here, let me, I know there's some other videos I was going to show, so let's see. Where's the one, there's ones where I had all the jaying and everything, I'm trying to find you one that's kind of cool. Is it Peyton? Let's see, oh, look at, see they are at the bottom? They're going to come up, there they go, there's a black one, this shows you a little bit. There's a black one right there. That's they look like dark like that, and then you, I know that's going to be born pretty soon. See how dark the the uh, chrysalids are. Now there's. Let's see. They climb to the top and they J. Are, are, there's another name for a pupus, and I'm trying to find one that I have. There it is. That's the one actually when it hatches. That was Josh. Coming out here. They kind of look like a bee or something like weird when they come out. Not quite as pretty as when their their wings are dried, but that's what they look like. And see, they are eating all that stuff. See, all that food source, like when they were in there and all the stuff that comes out, they're actually cleaning themselves. So they're actually eating whatever food source was inside. Hi, David. You can see it. Look at that. Look at it. It's it's expanding its thing. It's cleaning all of it up. So that is a food source it has right from the very beginning when it starts to, to um, well, I want to get the right word. I've been calling it, and I'm wrong too. I've been calling it hatch, but that's not the right word because eggs hatch, and there's another name for it. But uh, they actually come out, and then they start cleaning themselves. So you can see it, um, which is a really cool one. And good morning, David. Yeah. So where is, I'm going to move it along, okay, this is, uh, oh, that's a release, did I release some? Oh, that's another release I have, Peyton and Josh releasing. There's two of them, watch this. I don't know if they released, did they go? I can't remember if I had to take them back in and then I had to release them again. I think that's what happened. They just stayed on the branches and they didn't go. Yeah, uh, I didn't see this one yet. Oh, you didn't see this this particular part of it? See, they didn't go. This is what I do. They didn't go. They just hung there, and I went, okay, I'm not leaving them there. They're not flying away. So I take them back in, and I make sure they're all spunky, and then I try it again, and then I release them. Well, actually, Kathleen, it can go until October, but I won't raise a butterfly until October because it won't make it. it it's going to be too cold for it. 
So they, they lay eggs all the way near me up to September, October, but in our area, it's too late. If I were to take it, you can't release a butterfly in the wintertime, it's gonna die. And actually, where I bought the milkweed, the guy did an experiment. He told me, he said he took one, he took a butterfly uh, in, or sorry, a caterpillar in, in the wintertime in September, October. He brought it in, it went to a chrysalis, and then it never hatched, it kind of died because of the weather conditions, it never survived. That's what he told me. So really, that's why I'd like to get them out by September. I don't want them hanging around past September. They gotta get going. I actually feed all of the ones that were released in September. I feed them so they have a chance because remember, there's no food source for them. As fall comes in, the flowers die off and there's no food source. They need to go for a warmer area where there's flowers to eat. So um, that's what I'd say to you in my area it's going to depend on other areas the butterfly season could go a lot longer in other warmer areas but for me it's like i said they'll still be late they'll be hanging around till september and then you'll start seeing none of them by october you shouldn't see any of them but the eggs are still around because they've been laying eggs the whole time so i'm doing my best to grab the eggs as soon as i can right now it's the 13th of august it's going to take several weeks to turn it into a butterfly. So that puts me into it's already late. You know, I'm going into the beginning of probably late September, October, and I'm going to get them out. I'm going to feed them, release them, and that's it. So I don't want to do any more because if you do that, like I said, that they, they die. If I, I bring it in, it won't even turn into a butterfly when it's, the season starts to get too cold. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to raise an egg and have it die or it's gonna to have to live in my house for until it dies so um where else do i have i want it, you're talking about how they stick and everything and i wanted to show you this part I, i'm trying to find see there they are they're climbing let's see if this is a good one and then they turn into a j or kind of a name is poopus that they call it too it's going to climb the, climb up here let's see if it's showing you I have some good filming of this. Oh. This is not the one, though. One. All right, this is... That's that was my first nine I did. And then I have another seven. The one, the seven set is... They're, they're the ones coming in, hatching now. And again, I want to get that right word, but this, this set were the seven right on the bottom. Climbed up. And then that's the batch that are hatching now that we've released Kathleen and Helen and Larry with. And then, um, I, and then I had another batch of six. And then I have one like tiny one. That is not. There is one where I want. I showed really good pictures of this because they were jaying and everything. That's what they call. Because there we go. There's a J, right there. See, they go up to the top. You can see one. I'm gonna. I wish I could pause this. Let's see if I can pause it. Anyways, it, the J. They'll turn. They'll go up there. They'll take that a good day to to sit there and find a spot they like. Then they, they release whatever the liquid is in them to put their tail kind of there. And then they take a, they'll curl up. That's a lot of work they, uh, to, to just be a butterfly. I know, it's a lot of work. Absolutely, I agree with you. So they crawl up and they have to, to like seal themselves through the liquid part where the black, it turns black after. And it's really done really strongly. Most of them don't fall off because it's pretty strong. And then They'll go into a J for, like, it could be a day they go into a J. And then after a day, then suddenly they'll put the green liquid and turn themselves into a chrysalis. And then from a chrysalis, now that what I've observed, it wasn't eight days, it was nine. So after they turn into the green chrysalis, then they, they become a butterfly between, um, the, the earliest I had this year was nine to 11 days, uh, what I've observed. Well, it depends. Jesse, are you in? I did a map. Let me pull it out. I kind of got rid of it, but it's on here. Image. If you are in the, this is what I'm going to say, and I've been saying that. If you are in, uh, just give me one second. I got to find the map. If you're in the migration area, then you should actually grow common milkweed and you will see them. Trust me. They'll come. Oh, you are. New York is part of, of it, I'm pretty sure. Look at the map here, you guys. 
you see the 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 map right there that's the migration map and if you look where your area is see we're up there in canada i'm up there but if you look through mexico where they're coming out of mexico they're going a couple of directions through california they're coming down through all most of the states uh, you can see it that's their migration if you you live anywhere and i'm pretty sure new york is their migration period just if you actually plant common milkweed or any kind of milkweed that can grow in your area don't get that the one i'm showing you don't get that one if it can't die off um but if you get common swamp milkweed or any kind of milkweed and grow it in your area you will see monarch butterflies that's what they're attracted to you can you can do two things you can make sure they have a food source which is the milkweed which is number one and you can also plant a butterfly tree a butterfly bush and they'll they'll attracted to the pollen from the flowers trust me i got different kind of butterflies coming because they're taking the pollen out of these butterfly bushes and loving it so a lot of insects and butterflies like um, a butterfly bush and i have because of my garden i plant three of them and i'll be doing more um and my garden is not exactly where i want it yet but it, i'm going to film it and i'll do a quick video for a friday to release to show you how my plants are getting bigger and i have put more plants in that area to attract uh, butterflies and bees and everything but and milkweed also um helps with uh bees because that's what i'm showing you so that one where did i put it i have where did i put it it's milkweed it's under milkweed i have it right there where are you like i already showed you this one but i'm going to show it again there when they flower i have bees and everything on them that's why i did that I filmed it to show you that those flowers attract bees. You will probably get them on the, the um, you could get them on the route back, Kathleen, while you're seeing them, because you have hotter area than I have. So they're going to start to move out of the area. Some, I guess, stay and die within, which they shouldn't, but they're supposed to move out of Canada because Canada's going to start going cold come you know october november we're going to start our our, our area is going to start getting cold and they got to get out of here because they can't handle the cold they have to be going towards wherever the heat is going back to mexico so i'm trying to match what they do I, that's why i brought them out in the garage i'm doing the best if i could actually make them be outside and do something where i could build a butterfly cage outside raise them and protect them like um, outside and then let them go outside that that's probably the best I could do for them but I have to think about how I'm gonna do it to take care of them because they need to be protected too if you do a butterfly cage and and you have all the netting but with the weather conditions if they have nowhere to kind of hide that's not good either because they need to hide on trees and everything you're doing great thank you very much I'm trying I am trying every time I think of something better, what I've seen, what was wrong or not. Thanks, Jess. I, I try. I uh, try and educate myself even better. I try very hard. So, yes, let's go back to our reel there. I want to make sure you guys got Helen. There we go. Helen. We have Helen. I have them all, I think, pretty well named. From when I started, I have Helen and Larry. That's Helen and Larry today. Uh, of course, I'm going to show you Marigold, which I try to give her flowers, but she, I don't think she's hot. i got to feed her. After I get off of here, I'm going to go feed her and exercise her um, before I start my day. I don't think I'm going to stay on here too, too long um, because... I have to go do, I have a job to do today, so I have to get out of the house. So, and I normally leave by 11 o'clock. So I think I'm going to put this on. I would stay longer, but I do have to, uh, I'm going to put my thumbnail on and chat with you. Is there, you got any questions? Thanks, Kathleen, for asking me questions. Um, I appreciate it. I don't always have the right answer. And I'm, i got to learn... I want to say, um, wait a minute, What? Uh, what's the correct word? That's what I want. What's the 
the correct word for um, monarchs being born. That's what I want. Let's get the correct word. It's not hatched because eggs hatch. Um, well, they're calling up hatched. What do they do with a newly hatched monarch? So they are call, saying the word hatch. He was correcting me, kept on calling me. It's not hatched. An egg is hatched. And according to this, they're saying the same thing as I was. What do they do with newly hatched monarchs? And it actually has something here that I like. If the original plant is still fresh, it's easy to just leave the larva on this for a few days. They rarely crawl far during the time and do not need to be put in a container until they are about four days old. So they want you to keep the original container when they're little. But that's not, that happens here because they would be gone if I didn't do what I did. I don't know, he called it something else and that's not, they're using the word hatch, so there we go. Oh, wow. Um, I have a huge wolf spider and colorful lizards. Yeah, I'm not... You know what? I, some spiders are actually... I don't want them in my house, but actually, you should keep them outside. They're actually good. They kill really... Um, you know, I don't love spiders, but they are... There's a reason they're here. They kill a lot of the bad little pests that we have, the little bugs. And so spiders are really actually somewhat important too. I don't know, Kathleen. I have to look into it. I actually thought it was kind of mean when I said that to you. And then I started researching it. And um, I don't know if I want to tag it because the tagging becomes, I don't know. I have to think about it. Like, because I can't name it and tag the name of it if I release them, but I can give it a tag. I don't know. I have to look into it. It was like, it, yeah, I have to put it on the their uh, wing, and I don't. I always thought that was mean. I have them in my house. They eat bugs. Yeah. The spiders. I don't really want them in my house, but they do eat bugs. Actually, you want to know which one I keep more as a centipede. Actually, centipedes won't hurt you. See, a, a spider can bite you, but a centipede is more creepy looking than a spider. But they're actually more helpful. If you have a centipede, you should actually let it go. Don't kill it. Either let it in your house if you can handle it or put it outside. But centipedes are really actually quite the insecticide killer. They like they go in and kill lots of bugs, centipedes. So I never hurt a centipede. If it bothers me and I find it in my house, I kind of relocate it outside. But I never kill them. They're, I know how important uh, a millipede is to killing really bad small bugs. So, they're actually even better than a spider because at least they won't bite you. That's what I, I would say on that. So, I don't know when the next ones are born. I have to look at them, but they don't look... I don't know. I could be here tomorrow. There you go. The spiders in my bathroom keep the kids out of my bathroom. That, there you go. That's a good idea. But, um, I don't know. Like I said, I, I could be wrong. There might be some tomorrow, but they look too green for me. They're turning a little bit brown. So I do have eight more coming out for the butterflies. So I hope you join me as I come out. Um, I appreciate you coming back. Even if, um, you have one named after you, I appreciate you coming back and let's see who the next lucky contestants are and uh, naming the next butterflies and I, I'm I am happy to say that you named it after people that you lost so you can put whatever name you want on your butterfly if you want to use your actual name or you want to release it on, under behalf of somebody else that you lost in your life and you have some kind of thing you can do that too <laughs> I do the cup over it until hubby comes around and releases it that's cool Let's go. No, they got the same pattern. Nope. Surprisingly, do the, the butterfly have the same pattern on? Or are they all different? Nope. Same identical pattern, Kathleen. Um, interesting question there. 
same identical pattern except the two dots and you know what I'm gonna try oh I don't know have it I have the reel somewhere where I'm trying to see if I can find it because I would love to show you this one the two dots actual two dots that are on male butterflies and I thought I wasn't getting any and this time I got quite a few actually Kathleen yours was a, a male butterfly yesterday um, when I looked at it after I went oh she's got a male one but it doesn't matter if it's male female you still have it released under your name or whatever name you want to give I have I gotta find this thing uh, it's not music I want to see if I can find the one when I release um, Bruce's uh, it, I, it really showed the dots really nice but I don't know if I can where I put it because it really was cool uh, I don't know if I still have it on my phone I don't know Let's see. I'm try to find it and if I, I if I can if I can film another boy I'll show you um, the dots you know it actually it's more obvious than I thought when I start looking at it you need to see the back of the wings but you can actually it, it's you do see the two dots on the back of uh, a male butterfly it's kind of cool so you know what my hope for now is which I would love to have a rare white one that would be really incredible to see so maybe for next year I put put it out there that if I can find a, a, a white monarch it's not truly white it's kind of yellow tones but it's just different looking looks the same but it's different and that would be really cool to have a white white monarch that's what I'd say it's a lot of fun have you seen a white monarch before I'm gonna get I want to get a picture I didn't put that on here um, I didn't get one. I want to shove one on my computer. Let's see if I can do this. Save the image. <sighs> Try to see if I can find it. I want to put it up here. There it is. Yeah, That's what they look like. to my thumbnail because I gotta get off pretty soon. Um, yes, they they're pretty black and white ones. Uh, yeah, I like it. I like. I this is my goal. Maybe it doesn't matter if it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Yeah, the, I would like to get a white monarch. But uh, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I'll still do the same thing I like doing. But it would be interesting to see. Um, I'll put it again, and then I'm going to go back to my thumbnail. But there it is. Pretty interesting. Are you guys going to have a hot day today, or what's going on with the weather for you guys today? Is it going to be a hot one? Yeah, I would love that, Susan. I would love to have a white one. It looks like I'm all ready to go. 
Yeah, me too. I'm getting off here. Uh, yeah. God bless and uh, don't work too hard, Kathleen. Anyways, thanks, Jesse O. And have at it for being the first and second in here. So we have Helen and Larry. And have a wonderful day, guys. I got to get good out the door. So um, don't worry. I'll be back. I have eight more right now ready to... Uh, they'll be coming eventually. They'll be be hatching. So everyone have a wonderful day. You're very welcome. Take care. And I'll see you.